So this is the second part of how to cure SIBO, and in the first part I talked about how I got SIBO and some of the things that I have done that help me to manage my symptoms and are helping me to recover from SIBO. And in this video, we're going to talk about a few more things that should be um, talked about when dealing with SIBO and what you can do to help overcome this condition. And one of those things that I don't know if I would say never gets talked about, but maybe not as much as like taking the antibiotics and stuff, is has to do with low stomach acid. Now, it's possible that when someone takes the antibiotics that it lowers the stomach acid in the in the person and that sets up the breeding ground for the bacteria to multiply and overgrow in the small intestine because one of the jobs of stomach acid is to prevent um, pathogenic bacteria you know candida and viruses and stuff to, to basically keep them away f and keep them from overgrowing. That's one of the the benefits of our stomach acid and it also helps us to break down fats, carbohydrates, and protein so that we can actually use those things. So if the antibiotics are causing low stomach acid, then low stomach acid can be the, one of the primary reasons why somebody could develop SIBO. Not the only reason, but maybe one of them. And it could also be one of those you know, spokes in the wheel that um, is preventing you from making a full recovery from SIBO. So, um, I just want to name some of the symptoms that you could be experiencing by having uh, low stomach acid, and that would be bloating, belching, flatulence immediately after meals, heartburn, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation, undigested food and stools, um, acne, rectal itching, uh, chronic candida, hair loss in women, multiple food allergies, iron deficiency, wheat peeling or cracked fingernails, chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue, dry skin, and various autoimmune diseases. So really the whole spectrum of symptoms here. And uh, this can all be tied in with SIBO. So what you want to do then, if you have SIBO, is focus on increasing your stomach acid. Uh, three ways that you can do this, and uh, this primarily comes from bodyecology.com, which is a great website, by the way, and they have a lot of good information here. But one of the three key ways is to reduce or eliminate sugar. Now, while you're on the specific carbohydrate diet, uh, they allow honey, and honey is the primary sweetener that I use and include in my diet, and it has no bad effects really on SIBO. Um, second, you want to add fermented foods and drinks to your diet. So things like cultured vegetables, like sauerkraut, um, you could drink coconut kefir, you could drink kombucha or kavita. These are all different uh, fermented beverages. You just want to be careful you don't get any of uh, those drinks that have sugar added. Look for stevia or honey uh, in the ingredients, as those are allowed on the specific carbohydrate diet. And three, you want to eliminate processed foods. Now, while you're doing all those things, the next thing that you want to do is try taking a supplement called Betaine HCL. You take it with your meals. Um, you start out with one, and you take them until you start feeling a burning sensation in your stomach. If you don't feel a burning sensation in your stomach by taking one, then take two. If you don't feel burning with two, take three. And once you get to that burning, stop. And that's how many you need to be taking with each meal until your body naturally gets that stomach acid uh, levels back up. This is very important because, at least in my case, uh, I know I have low stomach acid. And taking uh, betaine HCL um, is very, very important in helping manage SIBO and also trying to help overcome it. 
Um, see, stomach acid is also important because, or hydrochloric acid as it's also referred to, is also important because it helps stimulate your pancreas and small intestines to produce digestive enzymes and bile that's necessary to further break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Um, so you need you need this hydrochloric acid. It's very important, and it also, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it helps prevent um, that pathogenic bacteria and yeast from overgrowing. So it, it's killing those things. So if you naturally have high levels of acid, you are going to kill and make that intestine more sterile, like it should be. That's why it's important to stay away from proton pump inhibitors and antibiotics and things like that. So just to uh, uh, recap here, get yourself some betaine HCL to help uh, increase the stomach acid and take those with your meals. Also try taking digestive enzymes. Eliminate sugar from your diet. Only try to use uh, honey or stevia without inulin, because inulin sometimes can aggravate SIBO. Um, and cut out processed foods, which you will be doing anyways, because you're going to want to be following the specific carbohydrate diet. Again, it's SCD diet, and they have a website where they have all the legal and illegal foods that you can eat. Just go to that website and find out which foods are legal or okay for you to eat, and that's what you want to be eating. Uh, they have recipes online, stuff that you can find. And so, you want to stick to the diet. You want to take the antimicrobials and antibacterials, like oregano and grapefruit seed extract, uh, or berberine, or, you know, some of the combination formulas, like uh, Candida Bactin, AR or BR. You want to <clears throat> take peppermint oil uh, capsules, if you are experiencing a lot of bloating or pain, um, you want to take, again, the betaine HCL to help increase the stomach acid. You can also eat fermented foods like sauerkraut or kombucha or kavita, which are beverages that you can drink. Um, you could also try taking apple cider vinegar before each meal. And also... By taking the fermented foods, you are going to increase um, some of the good probiotics because so you want to be focusing on rebuilding the healthy bacteria up in your system as well. And then, as far as if you have like a lot of uh, body aches and pains, you could look into white willow bark, which is a natural pain reliever that doesn't have the damaging um, stomach effects that Tylenol and aspirin and stuff have. Those things you really want to avoid. Uh, at all costs when you have SIBO or leaky gut or really any kind of digestive disorder going on. Because, in fact, taking a lot of Tylenol and stuff can actually set you up for these disorders in the first place. Um, <clears throat> so, white willow bark is great. You know, you can use that if you have headaches or colds or sore throats or something like that. Or just body aches in general due to the SIBO. Um... Because I usually get a lot of uh, lower back pain um, since this you know, SIBO started. And so that helps me to relieve some of that pain. Um, but once you lower, start lowering those gas levels that your intestine is creating, once you start lowering that gas, um, you'll find that a lot of your pains in your stomach and also in your back will tend to go away. Uh, maybe not completely, but you should notice a marked improvement over time. And so that's good. That's You're on your way now to, you know, getting better. So I can't stress enough, you know, the importance of increasing your stomach acid. Focus on stomach acid, okay? Um, so... The other thing that I want to mention is that if you have an iPhone or an iPod, go into the App Store. I don't know if it's on uh, Android devices, but look up SIBO, and you can download the SIBO app. Um, SIBO app has uh, dietary uh, guidelines on there, <clears throat> so it tells you like which foods are okay and which foods are 
problematic if you have SIBO. And again, use the Specific Carbohydrate Diet website, SCD, uh, Legal and Illegal Food List. That is also very, very helpful when you have SIBO. So hopefully, guys, this has been uh, informative, and hopefully these um, different things I've talked about will help you. As I know, they've definitely helped me. It's, it's not fun having SIBO or these digestive disorders, these stomach problems or whatever, but believe me, uh, if you do the things that I've talked about in this video, and, you know, a lot of these things I've talked about in the video are also talked about a lot of these other SIBO experts, um, you're going to feel a lot better um, if you're not currently doing any of this stuff. So don't lose hope, uh, be encouraged, and um, you will get better. So please like, please subscribe, and if you have any questions or want to know uh, any links to where you can buy some products or whatever to help you, um, feel free to ask. So take care.